When we're working remotely, something we don't have a lot of, but that is really valuable, is contained availability. So we have unavailability and we have uncontained or unconstrained availability. Um, but how do we get contained availability? Now, what do I mean? I mean, boundaried space into which valuable contact can emerge. So it's spacious, but there's also a boundary around it. Um, two examples of how that looks in an office. One is when you're working alongside someone and it's contained because physical space means you're only working alongside a certain amount of people. Um, and the other is wandering over. Uh, so maybe you have an open door on your office or you're working in a shared space and people can wander over and you can wander over to people. And this is contained by social norms. So I was talking to a team today, uh, this morning, and they said, well, hang on, now that we're working remotely, there's no limit on the amount of requests people put to you. Whereas when you're in the office, they don't, they don't come over to your office 25 times a day. And that's because social norms contain your availability and they store up a certain amount of questions before they come over or they see how your day's panning out and who else is contacting you. So um, the value of this kind of thing is that it allows the openness that we need for good content and work to emerge without the overwhelm of being constantly barraged. And I think... What I'm seeing in the, the teams that I work with is, um, is, is quite a lot of overwhelm from all the internet communication and sometimes isolation, right? So the two sides of it. And in fact, sometimes you see both. So how can we do this in a remote world? Well, the truth is we're still all figuring out the norms and the rules and the agreements we have about how to organize our lives um, in a different way. But I'm gonna share two ideas. Uh, one comes from an actually a really incredible conversation I saw between um, Adrian Simpson from Wavelength and Barbie Brewer, who was the and she was talking about when she was the chief people officer at GitLab, um, who are completely remote. And one of the things that they did, um, the directors did there, is they had open office hours or an open Zoom room, where that had a certain amount of time dedicated to it, and she would have it open on her computer, and anyone could join for that. Now, no one had the right to, for other people to not be there. So it wouldn't necessarily be um, the place people would bring up the most personal stuff, right? But it would be a space where she would either be working or someone would appear on her screen and they would be able to talk about anything that came up. So it was a more, it was informal, it was open, you could be talking and then someone else could join, um, something new could emerge in that space. But I think it's a really good idea and I'll post the video that it comes from um, below here. Um, so that's an open Zoom. And another was a really intelligent thing that came from um, uh, one of the businesses I was working with last year. I was running um, some leadership sprints and one of the leaders was talking about how they have to do a lot of complex coordination of people um, uh, and they're working really closely alongside one other peer. And what they found is the endless chat messages weren't giving them the kind of freedom and movement that they had when they were working in the office. So what they did is they just took another, um, they took another device and uh, set that up on FaceTime and so that they, and they would set it up for like hours on end. So they would be on FaceTime for a couple of hours together. And in this way, they weren't talking all the time. Sometimes they would share a joke sometimes um, they would ask a quick question and they found it much more fluid way of working. Um, so that's two examples of how we get contained availability. But how else, how are you finding contained availability in these remote times?